And welcome to the first episode of Pro Wrestling Talk. This is Aaron here. And you're probably wondering, why is this, why is this video on Aaron's food blog? Well, I've been covering and watching pro wrestling all my life. I've done my own ratings blog since 2008. And I figured why not delve into something like this do some predictions along the way and see how it goes. Not sure how regular this is going to be, but we'll see what happens. The first pay-per-view I'm going to be covering is SummerSlam 2012, which literally takes place hours from now. Eight matches on the card as of right now. So let's go with the pre-show match to start. United States Champion Santino Morella versus Antonio Cesaro the Challenger. I've got my laptop here, that's why I'm looking to the side. I keep forgetting Santino Morella is the champion because he's really not defended the title a whole lot, at least from what I've seen. Antonio Cesaro's kind of languished around. He's been here for a little bit. He's just been there, but he hasn't been doing very much. Cesaro needs to win the title here. He needs the title way more than Santino. Santino's going to get a big pop whenever he comes out anyway. So, in order for Cesaro to have any sort of credibility, he needs some sort of title to give him a reason to be put on TV. I'm predicting Cesaro's going over. There's been articles floating around the internet saying, uh, you know, Cesaro would love to have the European title back because, of course, being Claudio Castagnoli in Ring of Honor, he was always talking about being very European. And he's doing the whole I can speak five languages deal, which I guess is better than nothing. So, um, Cesaro, I think, is going over. Tag Team Championship match, Kofi Kingston and R-Truth versus the Prime Time Players. Yes, AW has been fired, and before AW got fired, I would have bet the farm that the primetime players were going to win. I still think the primetime players are going to win because, heck, they need the titles. They need the push more than Kingston and R-Truth. Those two can be single stars for all I care. Really, it's a matter of Triple H trying to at least get some sort of uh, effort going into the tag division. At least that's what I'm reading. I would say the primetime players are going to win. And they're going to say, see, we, we didn't need a manager. We can do this by ourselves. And they can just leave it at that. Intercontinental Championship match. Rey Mysterio, the challenger versus The Miz. Why? <laughs> they, this match just got thrown together by AJ Lee just for the heck of it. I think it's going to be a decent match. Mysterio can still go and they have fun matches. But... You know, Mysterio's in the twilight of his career. He's had so many knee surgeries already. Miz came back from shooting his movie. Before that, he was doing jobbing duty to get him off camera. So now they need to build him back up again, give him some credibility again. And to knock off Rey Mysterio would be a nice notch in the belt for Miz. I'm going to pick Miz to, win the ti to uh, retain the title. Kane versus Daniel Bryan. It's one of those situations where they have those ties with AJ Lee and they really don't fit into any of the title pictures. So AJ just decides, oh, let's throw these two guys together and have them fight. Daniel Bryan's yes and no chance have gotten so over with the crowd. And I'm pretty sure those shirts are selling like mad. You can see the signs in the crowd. WWE has done something right, taken full advantage of the whole yes and the no thing. Kane and Daniel Bryan have clashing styles. Kane does some of the high-flying stuff. He can go off the top rope and everything. Pretty agile for a big man. But he's more the power game, methodical style. Daniel Bryan's going to be the speedy guy trying to kick people in the head and do a lot of submissions, technical wrestling. I probably see Kane just winning here. Daniel Bryan honestly doesn't need to win. He could win by cheating uh, or something. But, you know, you're not going to see Kane tapping out here. Now we actually get to the four matches on the card that actually have some sort of storyline done to it, some decent storyline buildup. 
First went Chris Jericho and Dolph Ziggler. This has all been about how Chris Jericho cannot win the big one. It's no secret that Chris Jericho is planning to take time off from WWE to go on tour with his band Fozzy. That's fine and everything. He's Chris Jericho. He doesn't need to always be here anyway. And Jericho's been very, very good at putting a lot of people over. Ziggler is going to be one of those people that he should put over. Ziggler's being, the, you know, Bill's the next big, big star in the company. Everybody loves to work with him. Ziggler, he's Mr. Money in the Bank as well. The guy needs more firepower, uh, more ammunition to uh, add to his credibility. I'm picking Ziggler to win. The World Heavyweight Championship match is uh, Sheamus versus Alberto Del Rio. Booker T had nixed the match. He had canceled the match because Alberto sick five goons on uh, on Sheamus. All because Sheamus stole Alberto Del Rio's car. In my book, just the, the writing has been horrible. And that's been very common in WWE anyway. It's hard for me to see Sheamus losing because they're, they're doing the whole thing about how Sheamus is really becoming more like John Cena in the sense that the guy is rarely losing clean. He's not going to tap out. He's being billed as a tough warrior. So, how is Alberto Del Rio possibly going to win? And chances are Alberto's not going to win this. But I'm holding out hope that Alberto Del Rio will win the title by maybe some sort of shady means, some sort of cheating. It's not going to be via a submission. It, ha it would have to be by a, a roll-up or something. So I hope Alberto wins, but quite frankly, it's just going to be another bro kick to the face of Alberto and Sheamus is going to retain. WWE Championship match, we have uh, CM Punk the Champion versus John Cena versus The Big Show. First off, Big Show is not winning the WWE title. The guy is just in there to just so that it, it, it can be a different, something different from just having Punk and Cena all over again. They've really hyped, WWE has really uh, hyped two things. One, how long CM Punk has held the title. And two, that the champion doesn't have to be pinned or doesn't have to submit to lose the title. They've done a decent job of saying, oh, Punk has the, what, the 14th longest reign or the 11th longest reign or however long it is now in WWE history. So what does that mean? That can only mean one thing. Cena is going to win. And Cena is going to have to win by pinning Big Show. You can look at whatever scenario you want, but the fact is uh, Cena is probably just going to come in and pick the bones or something. And uh, CM Punk's going to feel like he got screwed, give him a chance to, a reason to really go heel, go full heel, and make AJ more of a face GM. She actually really kind of is a face GM, but not near to the level of a Booker T. He's just extreme face GM. I'm picking Cena to win the title. He can have, I don't know how many reigns now. Would that be number 11 for, for John Cena? Lastly, we have the... It's really just the... It's going to be a fight. Uh, there's no other way to, uh, to describe it. Triple H versus Brock Lesnar. Lesnar, if you've seen him on camera, he's he's just totally not interested in being with WWE. The guy is here for money, and he's here just to capitalize on the Brock Lesnar name because he's been UFC champion and he's had you know WWE ties in the past. He had a nice run the company. Now you look at him and he just looks like I don't want to be here. It's it was really evident that they brought Paul Heyman in to act as mouthpiece for for Brock because Paul Heyman is a million times better on the mic than, than Brock Lesnar. Who's going to win? Triple H. They had uh, Triple H, uh, or they had Brock Lesnar break Shawn Michaels' arm to make Lesnar look, you know, real bad, real, real dangerous because that's the same thing that Brock did to Triple H a few months ago. Well, that that's that's all that it really is. Uh, Triple H is going to find a way to win. It would be nice to give Brock a win because he has so he doesn't have very many dates to work and he's booked for WrestleMania next year. 
But the way that Lesnar has carried himself with the company, the way that he's he just looks on camera, the way that he probably carries himself backstage, it it just WWE knows that he's just they're not gonna invest in Lesnar after after WrestleMania next year. And Lesnar's gonna go off camera for a few months again and then he'll probably come back I would guess sometime around the Rumble and they'll uh, hype Wrestlemania all over again. So that's the car as you can see there's no Divas matches on the card. I keep forgetting at times Layla's the champion. I hope that the likes of Sarah Del Rey who WWE signed Hopefully she makes it on camera at some point too, because uh, she has, if you've watched her independent work, uh, she's very, very good. And they, that's, there's a reason why they signed her. Anyway, uh, that's it for now for Pro Wrestling Talk. I will see you maybe uh, next month. Catch you later.